Okay, my uh, GPS is telling me I'm at ground zero. Uh, this is a West Virginia Tim Day Spring collaboration cache. Uh, this must be the cache. Uh, the reason I know it's the geocache is it's trying to act like it's a birdhouse, but there's no place here for the bird to go in. So let's take a real close look at this and try to figure out what we've got to do to sign this log. Uh, this cache is hidden at a very busy intersection. There's a drive through bank only 100 feet away. So there's a lot of traffic right here on this road. So this cache is sitting here to, at, at, a, at a busy spot, but nobody has any idea it's a cache. The only reason I know it's a, a geocache is because my GPS tells me I'm at ground zero. Uh, but as I investigate this cache, um, I'm really trying to figure out what I uh, do to sign the log. Uh, now there's a hint on this cache page, and it says I'm going to need a AA battery. So some way I've got to figure out what I've got to do to use a AA battery here. So if I look at this cache, um, it kind of looks like um, it's symmetrical. Uh, I went around to the back, there's nothing on the back, there's nothing on the front, the roof is pretty solid. I've looked underneath, uh, there's nothing underneath. It does, something right here looks real suspicious. There's a cutout right here in the log. I mean, they're right here in the 4x4 four four post. But if I can stick my finger up in here, I can't feel anything. So, as I look, this is very, very strong right here. This is all attached. But if I come over here on this side, this is exactly ex like the other side. They look exactly alike. But when I pull, I can feel something right here wiggle. And if I pull this pin up and I remove this red, now I see where I'm going to use my AA battery. And right here it says down. So let's just put our battery here and see if we can hear anything happening. Now you can't hear that, but I actually hear something happening. Let's look down here. Okay, see what's happening? The cache presented itself. So now all I've got to do is sign this log and then to put the cache back, uh, the cache page tells me I just have to reverse what I did. So now I come here, I reverse what I did, and notice that the cache is going right back up. So I literally just let it go until it's out of sight and I can't feel anything. I can let it go. Uh, this is labeled, tells me which way to put it on correctly, so I can place this back. I put the pin back, and this is Widget. Welcome to Widget. Okay, let's head back to my cash shop where I'm going to give you the uh, details and the hints on how you can build a motorized let's cache. Talk about the building of the box. It's not real important, but a lot of people ask. This cache is about eight inches wide. It's about 14 inches tall. If you go all the way to the top down to the bottom, it's about 14 inches tall. Now, uh, one of the things I think is important on this cache, this is three quarters inch wood right here, and I've actually used a piece of scrap oak that I had around the house. Here's a motor I used. Uh, you can look it up on the internet and find it. Um, I think it's about $20. Now, of course, it is a solar motor, but it also uses uh, one AA battery, so it works perfect for what we need here. Here's the motor put together. You follow the instructions. It's very, very simple. I think it's for like a 10-year-old, so it's easy to put together. Uh, it creates two leads that I take over to put uh, on uh, the outside here. But one of the things, you electrical engineers are going to get a kick out of this. You have to prevent it uh, your cache from coming up it has to have a stop so all I did was uh, attach a, a little bolt there and put an eyelet so that the bolt hits the eyelet and stops to prevent the motor from burning up I actually took a dowel this is my dowel I drilled a hole just a hair bigger than this metal pipe and I put this dowel on this pipe and so it turns on itself uh, this little teeny spool right here is part of my wife's sewing machine. The other thing that I did, please notice that along the bottom, uh, I've got a bead of caulk. And also along the top, uh, it's all caulked. Um, so it's, it's glued together and screwed together. And then it's caulked. And the reason why is I just don't want insects 
bugs and bees and other things getting in here because it can foul up the, uh, the works of the motor. There are three nuts on each one of my shafts here where they hook the battery. There's a uh, countersunk nut right here. And of course there's two nuts uh, in here. Also uh, soldered uh, my electrical lead here uh, just to make it easier to work with. Okay, one more little hint that I'm going to show you. For you real observant types, up at the top, this is actually a Phillips screw. It's an outdoor decking screw. Down here at the bottom, I actually have what uh, my hardware store calls uh, timber lock. And it actually uses almost like a nut driver. The reason I put these two different type screws is I try to do anything I can to deter theft or people getting into my cache because I'm actually going to attach this cache to my 4x4 post. Uh, I'll take the outside cover, attach it down through so it looks very clean from the outside. Um, it makes it impossible for them to steal unless, you know, you can always steal it by taking a hammer to it and just destroying it. But if they wanted to steal the cache, they're actually going to have to take the front off. So to get the front off, they're going to have to come not only with a Phillips screwdriver, they're also going to have to come with a, a timber lock nut driver. And these are actually kind of countersunk, so you can't reach them with a regular screwdriver. So you'll never prevent theft, but the only thing you can do is deter it. Now to attach the cache to the 4 by 4 post, I've drilled a couple little starter holes. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it down here so it will be attached on the inside. And then on the outside, I think I'm going to put a couple L brackets. Uh, only thing you can do is deter theft. You're not going to stop it. Okay, let's talk about the 4 by 4 post. What I did is... I took a, a saw and I cut off the back of the post down to right here. And then I removed this section right here and placed this plumbing pipe, uh, cut out a notch so that this plumbing pipe would fit down in the post. That way the um, cash container is sliding inside a plumbing pipe so it's nice and smooth. In the front, all I did was notch it out and paint it black. Okay, the rest of this stuff we'll have to put together out at the cache site. Um, really, don't let this electrical motor thing scare you. It's really a simple, a very simple box with a hole in the bottom with an electrical motor uh, that's easy to put together, uh, fairly inexpensive, and it makes for a really unique caching experience. If you got any questions, as always, be sure to email me. I hope this video helped you, give you some hints on how you can build a motorized cache. Let's keep raising, raising the geocaching bar, one geocache at a time.